For us to understand how materials are subjected to what's called stress, um, we can look at the typical modes of um, loading, um, typically um, in mechanical systems, uh, depending on how um, a component is um, constrained in, to, in terms of its uh, manner of um, operation or the nature into which a component is interacting with another component. So these are uh, typical examples of how um, engineering components can be um, loaded. So we could have uh, a component being subjected to some form of cooling force, which will cause it to um, innovate. So this is where we term that um, a component being in tension and the force a tensile force. Uh, we've also got a situation where why some amount of force or pressure is causing um, a component to decrease in length. So while that decrease in length is taking place, there's also that possibility of natural uh, location in terms of the cross section of the whole So we can call that um, material being in a state of compression. So we can have a look at that. Um, so when it comes to compression and tensile, we've got the line of action of the force being uh, coaxial to uh, the centroid of the material. Whereas when it comes to shearing, and shearing is, um, or shear forces are responsible in causing uh, geometric or volumetric um, distortions in the material. So this is where you've got the forces um, not being uh, coaxial to the centroid of Material. So when you've got uh, forces being offset to the axes, the neutral axes of your material, this is where shearing will more or less uh, take effect. We've also got what's called torsion. So torsion is due to twisting. And you've also got bending, where you've got some form of transverse node that's acting normal to um, the axes of um, a given um, component, which will cause it to bend. So these are the common modes of loading when it comes to engineering materials. Now that we've talked about uh, failure modes and loading modes in uh, engineering systems and materials, we can now talk about what categorizes stress in material. So when we talk about stress, stress is just simply um, that amount of pressure that a component of material is subject to that cause or instigate some form of deformation. That's essentially what stress um, characterizes. So in this diagram here, we've got uh, a force that's pulling on the material. And what's going to happen is the material is going to experience some form of deformation. Whether that deformation is going to cause the material to stretch or whether it's going to cause uh, the material to shrink or share, that's essentially what we classify as stress. So stress can be defined, so as I've defined it here, as the measure of the pressure on the material that's going to cause it to deform. So mathematically, stress has the same formula similar to um, hydrostatic hydrogen, uh, hydrodynamic pressure. Uh, when it comes to uh, fluid dynamics. So mathematically, stress, which is typically characterized by the Greek letter sigma, is the ratio of the external force that's causing the component to deform divided by its cross-sectional area. Thus, stress is equal to force divided by area. And when it comes to the units, the unit for stress is measured in 
Pascal or Mega Pascal as the standard unit. So when it comes to Mega Pascal, that's the same as Newton per millimeter squared. Alternatively, you can leave express you will answer or your resort in terms of Mega Newton per meter. Okay, and Mega is equal to a million. So let's go through this example where we've got a component being subjected to a force of 10 kilonewtons. The length of this component is 1.5 meters and the diametric profile of the given component is 20 millimeters. So we've been tasked to calculate what is the measure of the tensile force that's instigated some form of deformation within the material. So for this particular example, we're all assuming that the material is deforming within its, under its elastic limit or below yield point. And we'll talk about what the yield point means in a bit. Okay, so we're looking at our stress problem regarding the bar being subjected to a tensile force of 10 kilometers. Before we get some information regarding the, the diametric parameter of the bar. So the diameter of the bar is given at 20 millimeters. So the first thing that we have to do is to work out the cross-sectional area. So the area of the bar, so we're going to A, is equal to pi over 4 times d squared, where d is the diameter of the bar. Okay. So we know that the diameter Catch y d is equal to 20 millimeters. Therefore, the area is equal to pi over 4 times 20 squared. And that'll be equal to, so shift pi over 4 times 20 squared. And that gives 314.2. One six millimeters squared. Okay. Always remember to write the units. Now that we have the area, we can now calculate the stress. So the stress in the bar sigma is equal to the force divided by the cross sectional area. So you can call that if you do. We know what the area is because we calculate the area, and the area is 314.16, and we know what the force is. The force is given at 10 kilometers. So we shouldn't forget that kilo is equal to a thousand. So the tensile force, which is F in this case, is equal to 10 kilonewton. is the same as 10 times 10 power 3, so that is a thousand newtons. So we substitute our known values into our stress equation. Stress is equal to 10 times 10 to the power of 3 all divided by the area 314.16 okay and it's a meter and a millimeter squared and that'll be equal to what so what we have to do is box in our known value of 10 to the power of 3 divided by 100 314.16 and that gets approximately 31.83 newton per kilometer squared which is the same as 31.83 mpa and here we go okay so just to quickly summarize uh, what we've just calculated we first of all note down the information that we so we know what the standard force is. So the standard force is given as 10 kilonewtons. So don't forget that kilonewt kilo represents a thousand. So we're looking at 10,000 newtons. We know what the sectional profile is. So we've been given that the diameter of the component is 20 millimeters. So we work out what the cross-sectional area is first. So you can either use pi r squared but I prefer using the engineering equation, which is A is equal to pi over 4 times D squared. Put in known variable, so we have pi divided by 4 times 20 to the power 2, and that gives the cross area 
sectional area to be 314.16 meters squared approximately. So now that we know that, we can then substitute known values into our equation. So the tensile force experienced by the given component is equal to the force, so that is 10,000 uh, newtons, divided by the area, 314.2 approximately. And when we do the computation, we get a tensile force measured at 31.83 MPa. So hopefully that is quite clear. So now that we've talked about stress, we can now talk about what is strain. So if we're saying that stress is that pressure that's going to cause a component to deform, then the measure of that deformation is characterized by what's called strain. So how much has the material deformed? So in this diagram here, we realize that when it comes to strain, strain is the function of the diametric parameters of a given component. So before the material is subjected to some form of um, deformation, it's got its defined span. And when some amount of force is applied to cause the material to stress, there's a change in that length. So LF is characterizing the final length that the material has gained after uh, being subjected to some form of tensile load, and LO characterizes the original length of the material before or prior to being subjected to a defined tensile load. And the difference between the two will be that measure in terms of how much the material has been strained by. So I've defined strain as follows. Strain is the measure of the after effect of stress on a given component of the material. And mathematically, strain, which is characterized by the Greek letter epsilon, is the ratio of the axial deflection, so that is the change in left. So change in left is characterized by delta L. And delta L is the difference between the extended length and the original length. So this is the mathematical formula that defines strain. So strain is equal to delta L, so that is the change in the length of material when uh, subjected to some form of strain, uh, stress, sorry, divided by its original length. Thus, since you've got length divided length, that makes strain dimensionless, meaning it's got no units, it's just a ratio. So let's see how we can put this in content relating to this example. So we've been tasked here to work out what is the measure of strain that the bars, bars experience when subjected to a force of 10 kilonewtons. Okay, and here the measured change in length is 0 0.35. So how do we go about calculating the strain? So now let's calculate the strain. So as we more or less inverted in the lecture, the strain is basically the measure of deformation experienced by a material component subjected to some form of force or stress. Okay. So for this particular question, how do we work out the strain? So the strain equation, so strain represented by epsilon, is equal to delta L divided by L such with naught. Okay. L so naught represents so original length of the bar before deformation and delta L represents the change in length due to the applied force. Okay. So what we know here, we can give the original length to be 1.5 meters okay. and the change in length is given as 0 0.35 millimeters. This is where we need to be very careful because we've got two measurements of different bases. So the original length is given as 1.5 meters and the change in length is given in the base of millimeters. 
So we have to ensure that the basis are the same. So we either change the radial length from meters into millimeters by multiplying 1.5 by 1,000, or we convert 0.35 millimeters into meters by dividing it by 1,000. So it's more or less up to you. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the radial length from meters into millimeters. So I'll be equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of 3 millimeters. So therefore, the strain will be equal to 0 0.35 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay. Or we can rewrite this as 0 0.35, bring the thousand over the equal sign, so that'll be times 10 to the power minus 3 over 1. Okay. And since it's millimeters of millimeters, these dimensions will cross out. Make our answer dimensionless. Okay. So we bring our calculator and we compute. So we've got 0 0.35 minus 3 divided by 1.5. Okay. And this gives us approximately 2.333. Four times ten to the power minus four, and there we have it. This is the measure of strength. Okay, so we've gone through um, the steps. So just to wrap things up, we've been given in this context the change in length. So the change in length has been given as zero point three five millimeters. We've been given the original length. So the original length is one point five meters. Thus. To calculate the strain, that will be the ratio of the change in the to the original length of the component, which would be 0 0.35 millimeters divided by 1500 millimeters. This is a very important fact. You need to be very careful that you don't have millimeters dividing meters. You need to ensure that you convert both measurements. To the same base. So if your change in length is in millimeters, then the original length needs to be in meters. Or if your original length is in meter, uh, uh, meters, then the change in length needs to be changed from millimeters into meters. Otherwise, that can instigate uh, a measure of error. So once you've done uh, the near the computation, we get approximately 2.3334 times 10 to the power minus 4.